know security is hard, so let's assume we're probably gonna get pwned by noon. But if we all start to get the basics right, we might not fully get pwned until. And we're live. Oh, hey, Joe. Hey, how are you? Oh my we're not going to look left or right because we can't remember who's on which side. But Right. To me, you're, you're this way. Up, Joe? Yeah. <laughs> that, yeah, that would be. But okay. you're, okay. Well, we've got to figure it figured out. Uh, Joe, thank you so much for being here. Uh, everybody who's, who's tuning into the stream, hello. Um, this, in case you missed the title screen from 30 seconds ago, it's Active Directory Defense 101 Part DOS. Um, and I'm You've been practicing your Spanish. I, yeah, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good at that, you know. Um, and I'm gonna just share my screen because I wanna uh, I wanna show you a couple of things, Joe, and and um, brag about. Um, this is like a, a just a mini intro segment called "Old Guy Figures Out Stuff That Everybody Else Already Knew." Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so just to give it, people who are tuned in some context of sort of where you and I have been, and then what we're gonna cover uh, today. If you go over, Joe, to uh, youtube.com slash 7-Minute Security, uh, you will find uh, a variety of videos. And I might, this might become an inception moment. Maybe we're going to see. <laughs> yeah. Ourselves. I'll try to avoid that because it just seems weird. Um, but if you went back, uh, where was it? Oh, oh a right while there, ago? Yeah. Three weeks ago? <laughs> whatever. <laughs> oh, whatever that. Show you're blowing my mind. Are we, are we live? <laughs> yeah. Are we is this live? Uh, okay. Oh, well, look at this. I mean, you'll get some ads because look at this 182 views, Joe. I probably just made a bunch of money right there, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but keep, you're paying yourself right now. Keep talking. <laughs> Shoot. Um, but look at this. If you scroll along, look at this. Old guy figures out a simple thing, which is putting chapters in YouTube yeah. videos. Isn't that nice? Awesome? So um so we covered, uh, you and I spent a lot of time talking about, we went to basic basics, right? Like picking good passwords via a strong domain password policy. So I think yeah. we talked about some of the things that make for strong and not so strong security password policy. Um, we also, uh, of course, dove into our friend Ping Castle. Ping Castle is a great way. Uh, and we went through it, I think, quite a bit uh, to yeah. show um to get a feel for what your password policy looks like. And if you've got things like users who are set to never have their passwords expire, that's something you wanna take a look at because presumably one or more of them might have a password set 10 years ago, which might've been right. password one, two, three, something like that. Um, we took a look at, hey, don't have um, passwords dangling out in any GPO XML files, which Pincastle will not only find for you, but decrypt for you on the right. fly. So you will know, which, which I love, you know, they even go that. And extra. you have that aha moment too, where you're like, I, we stopped using that password, I thought. And then you password spray it and you're like, oh, except for that one account, that's a service account that we haven't used for 10 years. Yes. That, that was a nice, yeah. a nice flow. I think we covered, which is yeah. if you, if you find that pass, if you find a password or multiple in those XML files, then yeah. Um, use something like crack map exec or Rubius password sprayed against the whole domain to sanity check your own work and be like, okay, we've now gone from, I thought we got rid of that password to I can confirm that we got rid of that password. And it's good to know, I think, how to do the, the Rubius password spraying um, just to do, I, I mean, I would recommend doing that periodically, right? Is just a sure. an audit just to make sure help desk admin two didn't decide to use that old password that you as a group thought you decided that nobody would use anymore. You know, you know what I mean? one weird thing on that note that I've seen too, Brian, that kind of pops into my head every now and again is like, you have a template for a, you know, a workstation or something that gets um, not frequently used. And that template spins up and, you know, the group policies aren't applied or whatever else. And that default account that you forgot to go back and change in the template is actually on that system or, um, you know, and then, you know, we talk about laps a little bit as well, but um, sometimes if you're creating a second account that's not managed by laps, you'll have some of those local administrator accounts that are like 
you know, IT admin or like help desk admin, and it uses that password and LAPS is only managing the administrator password. Um, so that's something to look out for as well. Not just that, yes. you know, the built-in administrator password that you're rotating with LAPS, also look out for those other accounts that may exist somewhere and get stuffed in the administrators group as part of an old template or something else. Yeah, yeah, good call. And I think, again, in part one, I think hopefully we did a pretty good job of showing how you can use TechMob Exec and Rubyus to audit both those local accounts and yeah, do your um, laps like audit as well as, you know, domain accounts. And then, uh, yeah, you talked about some new changes coming to laps, which I'm excited about. Yep. Uh, we even uh, dove a little bit into using crack map exec or power hunt shares to uh, digital dumpster dive in your SMB uh, shares around the enterprise. And uh, let's see. And then closed with kind of, I think our, um, we went, went a little bit over time, but what, I think we got the question about what's kind of cool, hip and sexy right now. Yeah. That's great attack vector. And boy, it's, it's holiday time, Joe, but I will say Active Directory Certificate Services is the gift that continues to, to give. And um, did you- And just, only if you're a pen tester. And only, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying the clients like that particularly, right. especially when other things, we've been on a few tests now where like, there's a lot to brag about outside of that. But I mean, it's such a sneaky one because, and I think we covered this, but you know, you're, you're really abusing a Microsoft service, though you're abusing it the way it was meant to be used or configured, right. unfortunately, right? Like, hi, yeah. I'm Brian. I'd like to enroll my cert uh, or enroll uh, on behalf of, uh, you know, Joe, the admin. And if the certificate service is configured that way, it's like, sounds good. I mean, here you go, right. <laughs> you know? So it's not really like, uh, right, you're not doing some weird remote code execution or abusing some missing patch. You're just kind of, you know, uh, and I, I think the important part about that, Brian, especially when we talk about multi-year engagements where customers are like, wait, why didn't this come up last year? We touched on that a bit, but it's, it's important to know that, you know, unfortunately, security is never done. You, you never get to a point where you're like, okay, we got it all buttoned up. There's nothing else to worry about. There's yeah. always new stuff and it can be challenging, we know. Um, but but it's definitely an ongoing thing. It's why you do risk assessments. It's why you pin test every year um, because the baddies are coming up with new stuff all of the time and we need to take that into account. And like we tell clients, you know, we pivot to what we're seeing actively exploited and, you know, certificate services right now is is just being exploited all over the place, both on pin tests and in real attacks. So. And there was, um, I think we've got it in Slack. I'll uh, try to see if I can find it when we get a minute here. But uh, I think the Spectre Ops group did come out with a post giving some updates on some of these certificate services uh, attacks that I think have nicknames of like ESC one through eight. And they kind of talk about like, this was patched, but there's still this workaround and that kind of stuff. So that's another great URL just to keep in your back pocket, I think, yeah. whether you're a fender or defender, just to, uh, yeah, just, just to kind of know where some fixes and workarounds uh, have been refreshed. Um, all right, so today I wanted to uh, talk about a couple things that have come up uh, that are relevant to our, our pen test work, um, all kind of revolving around uh, groups. So uh, let, let me do one tiny shameless self-promotion here, Joe. Um, just in the last uh, couple weeks here, uh, I did a, a security conference talk uh, called uh, Simple Ways to Test Your SIM. And this was focused on seven things that we do over and over and over and over and over again. And not very often we'll get caught doing. So it's things like port scanning and curb roasting and AS rep yeah. roasting and dumping hashes from the domain, so on and so on. And uh, one of the things that is that is in that uh, list is um, key group membership changes, which I want to get your opinion on because, uh, in fact, let's just get a, a visual going to um, sometimes clients will be like, hey, you know, here's your Sally for marketing average user account. If you do find yourself a path to uh, domain admins, then kind of plant your flag there, add a new user to that, or add Sally's account to that to kind of proof of concept that you made it. And 
we're happy to do that, but I don't really like to be like, well, good. You would know when you got owned because I don't think an attacker is likely to um, uh, to do that. But uh, it, we, we do it on pen tests and sometimes find that uh, the SIM or the SOC will alert if there is a key domain admin group membership change. However, uh, maybe I'll just, I think I can open multiple at once here. Um, you know, there's a couple other big ones uh, that you would want to know um, if people got into as well. So, um, for example, let's see, I don't know if I can make this look nice or not. I just wanted to get them kind of all up on the screen at the same time. So schema admins, folks who can tinker with the, the schema, you wouldn't want just my mom in there tinkering with the schema and then enter enterprise admins, right? Designated administrators of the enterprise. Um, now I got, um, uh, sorry, I got, I sort of tangented myself, but, uh, <laughs> coming up, coming up, uh, Thursday, the 29th, I'm going to redo that talk. So for people yeah. who are conference, which would be probably everybody, um, <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll, we'll redo it. Um, but the other bit of context I wanted to give here is I went through this list of seven things with our buddy, Matthew Warner of Blumira, who's, you know, right. day in and day out is looking at these kind of attacks, building signatures for them. And when we got to talking about these key uh, group membership changes, um, and I'll put this in the in the show notes of our interview, but he, um, I just wanted to bring up here, he said, oh, wow. well, actually, here's the list we look at, at, at in Blumira and and that we monitor for changes. And so, um, so yeah, that, that's kind of a lot of information. But but as it relates to yeah, monitoring these these key groups, I think for me, I've got some reading to do because I forget about things like. Uh, you know, oh, DNS admins, right? Like right. that. Could, there's some nefarious attacks that could be built around tomfoolery with with DNS records. But, um, but yeah, have you seen? Uh, you know, any thoughts on 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 these groups or how you've seen? Um, you know, have you seen in any real world attacks or anything? Kind of these, like, I'm just going to quietly add myself to this over here and and hope nobody uh, notices. And then you find artifacts later that are like, like, whoa, we we had. Um, we had too many people in these groups or we have an account we don't recognize in these groups. Yeah, so so I would say that's a multi-part answer. For organizations that are matured beyond, you know, the standard, you know, seven things that we talk about often, yeah. um, you have to continue to mature your operations and therefore looking for additional attack vectors will become more of a priority to you. And so... The other thing that kind of falls into this category as well, and where, where I see people get into trouble, is what happens with nested groups. And so one of the reasons for monitoring so many of these groups is oftentimes you will see that in some of these other groups, let's take server operators, you'll end up for expediency dropping in some other groups and they get nested. And, okay. and so, it becomes much harder to monitor what's going on. So I would say, generally speaking, start out with, with the big three, right, that you pointed out. Um, monitor those for changes. And as you mature, you can start branching out and continuing to mature your program, so to speak. In addition to that, um, we try and model, like I said before, most of our pen testing on what we're seeing in the wild, both on advanced adversarial attacks, but also just commodity ransomware. And I will tell you, as everybody probably knows, commodity malware is getting way more like APT because all of those techniques are well published and they're like, hey, we're going to use these techniques because they work. And so the thing that we're seeing them do less and less of is add themselves to groups primarily because it's unnecessary. So it's a good thing to be aware of, like we say, situational awareness, but we're not seeing it as much as we used to because people are monitoring them more and more. They're pivoting to other areas like the certificate-based attacks, like curb roasting, other things that are A, much harder to detect because the, the detections haven't been brought up to speed yet, and we're still working on the older detections like group membership. So again, kind of took a, a bit of a tangent there, but that's nope. tying all that together between as your program or what you're watching 
advances, you may need to do this. This also creates a lot of noise. So you, you may have bigger fish to fry in your program. So make sure you're not just creating noise for the sake of creating noise. Make it actionable. Yeah. Yep. Good call. Uh, yeah, I think you hit it on the head that you want to have aw awareness of these things, but don't, you know, we've been having this conversation, I think a lot lately of don't think, well, I got my eye on, you know, even this, this whole, this group list, right? Therefore I will know when some big move of escalation happens. Like you said, um, a lot of the ransomware and, and experienced operators are not likely to do something so loud. So it's still good to have, but it's no, no, no uh, AD security silver bullet. And I kind of laughed about this, but I, I checked D for report. We've talked about D for report in the past. And yeah. just to kind of keep, keep up to speed on what, you know, the ransomware crews are doing still like in every single reported incident that I re read about, who am I? And like, you know, net user account or enumerating domain admins, the group itself, just to see who's in there. Yeah. Those simple, two simple commands are in almost every ransomware report. So, I mean, before you're looking at all these groups, can yeah. you detect those two commands being run to command line? Because chances are that's like the second or third thing they're going to do after they land on a system, that situational yeah. awareness, they need to know who they are. Okay, I'm this user and I want to be a domain admin. I'm going to see who I am and then I'm going to see who's in the domain admins group and I'm going to target those users that are in the domain admin groups. Almost every single time it's part of their default playbook. Focus on those. Focus on what people are doing on the yeah. default report. And when you have a managed service provider, because they can scale, they can monitor all these things. But what they're going to do is say, hey, Brian, I noticed XYZ user got added to enterprise admins. Did you guys do that? Is it expected? And so, you know, monitoring that yourself and having somebody monitor that and then ask you the question, you know, I would hope you would know the answer to that before they ask as a managed service provider, but you may not. So, yeah, yeah, good stuff. That that's so follows the narrative of the the pen test reports we give, which are more you know storyboard format, and you get to kind of the end of the story where it's you know we're dumping hashes and we're getting around EDR and we're this and that, and and then the the all the fury ends up on how do we fix those last three criticals? And it's like, let's, let's bring the story back to the very beginning. And like you said, right. yeah. how about, you know, look at all these other things that were missed. And I want to say, I don't want to misquote, but I, I feel like th there's a, there's a John Strand quote or thought that is very much in line with what you just said of, you know, especially when you're getting pitched a shiny security solution, right. you've got all these acronyms attached. Uh, I think he even said one time, like, hold on a second in your environment. Can you detect when someone drops on a system and types, who am I? Is the answer? No. You don't need <laughs> you don't need whatever that is. You're not ready, and and I think his point would be what you just said, like you know, situational awareness. Uh, get alerted when they're learning about the environment before they even have the opportunity to make these, um, you know, louder moves and and uh, uh, you know whatever attempt whatever they're going to attempt, even if that's not group uh, big group membership changes. Um, all right. Awesome. Uh, so, okay. So from here, I, I want to uh, stay focused on groups, but I, I wanted to to quickly review because I think in one of our just more casual um, kind of Twitch streams we were doing, we, we've uh, talked about that, that machine account quota before yep. um, where uh, you've, you've got a value. Uh, the default value is 10. I'm just going to bring it up here, uh, which just out of the box, if you just installed a domain today, uh, you would have this uh, value here, right? Uh, machine account quota set to 10. Um, I now ran into, uh, and this is another reason I wanted to bring it up. I've run into my third, I think it's our third test where the value is set to 10. And, you know, we probably noted in the report, hey, this is 10. Let's talk about this finding. But under the hood, the client had um, a GPO adjustment in place that t ties in with this um, so that I guess the point being, you can't just take this at, at face value of, oh, any any Joe can uh, join up to 10 machines to the domain. There's yeah. a, another place you need to check. And I got to um, note to self, figure out if there's a if there's a tool, maybe crack map exec or something can query for this because I'm seeing it more and more. And I don't want to put a incorrect finding in the uh, in the report. Right. 
but uh, I'm just going to bring up group policy editor and I'm going to look at the, um, I'm going to just pop open the default domain controllers policy and under, let's see, policies, I think it's Windows settings. Let me double check. I think it's Windows and security. And uh, let's see. Oh, local policy. Yeah, there it is. User rights assignment. Let me just expand this out. Um, right here, add workstations to the domain. Yeah. So here's the other place, you know, where where a client may have come in, yanked out authenticated users, and then put in something like help desk admins, right. server admins, whatever. So, um, so that that's very cool. There's your other way of controlling because I again I thought for years and years only Brian, who is a domain admin, can join crap to the domain. Yeah. Um, and, and so really using this setting would get it working that way. If you so chose, right. You could take out authenticated users. You could put in, oh, I see. <laughs> you could put in <laughs> domain, domain, just uh, domain, right? You put in, well, actually I think even with, even with everything out, I believe domain admins can still join, but anyway, you can get more granular control, especially if you're a large enterprise where maybe you've got multiple levels of it or security staff, and maybe only the level twos and threes should join stuff to the domain and chances are it's not a domain admin um it's it's probably a better best practice i did i just invent something new no it's probably a best practice to make it those people who are the ones that are doing that work and chances are it's going to be like a help desk group or somebody like that because they're doing the new computer provisioning they're troubleshooting you know, machines that have fallen off the domain or whatever else, but just target it to the right people. And you're right. That tin user, you know, used to be something we'd focus on. And then it's only been, you know, here in the last year where we started saying, well, the best practice now is to only have those users in this group policy who need to add computers to the domain. The tin is kind of relative to, are you locked down from a group policy perspective to who can add the computers? Right, right. Okay, so I just wanted to get that one shown just one more time, kind of for the record. All right, and then uh, back to groups a little bit. I want to talk about, and I, I'll be honest with you, Joe. Sometimes I don't want to share this because uh, <laughs> yeah. it causes many a headache in uh, in pen tests. Um, but I wanted to talk about a group called Protected Users. Yeah, and as the uh, uh, description implies here, members of this group are afforded additional protections against. Uh, expand it authentication security threats and i have got i think this might be the same link but let me just drop it in the chat so that we're kind of keeping record of this stuff and uh just quick tangent joe uh kevin here i'm going to show his comment uh he said all the best content is on the bri fly channel so um yeah, yeah. i'm going to take this this moment to do a a, 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 a shameless Plug for uh, bryflyworld.com, Joe. Yeah, I Joe. hope you're. Oh, you're shoot. Advertisement. You gotta... <laughs> That's right. Uh, I forgot my domain is called Bryfly World. So I've got kind of a split DNS uh, shenanigans going on. But if you go there, there's videos oh, about indoor skydiving. Yeah, just not in the lab, right? Just, yeah, right. Looks like it looks like I've uh, the administrator here doesn't want me uh, looking at that. Um, but let me put, okay, good. I got the link in, in the show notes. So, um, yeah, and I might just bring it up here just for reference. This should load, I think. Um, it, it's it's a it's an interesting little read through because they're they're Microsoft is pretty clear to say, listen, it, here's this cool group you can use. You can throw users into this group, and it will give them some uh, protections, including and it starts talking about um, here's the different protections for signed in protected users. Yeah. Um, but but they go on to say like. There's no special bells and whistles. There's no tick boxes. There's no, it's kind of just, you put people in the group or you don't. And, yep, and yep. I, I sort of li like that in a way. Um, but but as I've been playing with it in the lab, and that's what I want to go through a little bit, um, I've definitely come across some hiccups and, and things that don't work. But, uh, but let me just, um, I, I think just to provide a little context, if it's okay, um, I just want to show like a, a common thing we, we do in pen testing to get pretty quick domain admin, and then show how uh, protected users can um, help thwart some of those uh, attacks. Yeah. And like I said, 
cause us, um, you know, uh, many a headache, right? Like while, while we're doing our, our work. So give me just a moment here. And, um, I, I don't know if you, if you've played much with it at all, uh, Joe, I know that, um, a couple of our customers have reported that when they use it, um, I, I think the big thing is right is that it forces Kerberos authentication. Is that right. like the yeah. no NTLM? Yeah, no NTLM. Okay, and that the 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 gotchas I've heard so far with it, or where people have been in trouble, is certain like um, backup service accounts and things don't, depending on what software and stuff they're using, might not support that, and so you might have right. to not have all your DAs. Yeah, for in some reason, I would I I want to say older software, but I, but I still find it. Um, will only allow NTLM authentication and, and, you know, they don't support Kerberos. I, I, again, I want to say it's old, but I've seen it in relatively modern software and it's, it's, I don't know. It irritates me that that's still the case, but yeah. All right. So let me just do as kind of an example, I'm going to um, see if this works. So I've got, a, I've got a average, um, just a, regular old domain account uh, called Bryfly. Okay, but it happens to be a local admin on this uh, 7.10 system. So I'm just going to do a quick authentication to it just to prove that indeed yep. uh, pwned here, right? So I so Bryfly here is a local admin of this box. So when we see that on a real uh, pen test, one thing that I love to do immediately after that is turn on uh, W Digest, and I never remember uh the syntax i think it's action equals enable. your memory is better than mine i copy and paste <laughs> okay yeah yeah i i think that's it let's try it uh, maybe i'll look up good okay so yeah. we're turning on w digest that's like an old protocol that in certain circumstances would allow uh, a system to authenticate to another system uh with creds in clear text okay so yep. that Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, yeah, it, it does allow clear text. So super old apps that, that didn't really understand any of those in TLM, it basically just sent the password in clear to whatever system you're authenticating to. Yeah. And, and it, it should, you know, if you've, if you're just hearing that for the first time and it makes you kind of uh, shudder. Uh, yeah. Same here with, with us, uh, with Joe and I, um, but so, so it's off, I think, I don't know, starting on is like Windows 8 and server 2012 or something like that. But uh, what I love to point out is just because it ain't on by default doesn't mean we can't just switch it on. And that's what we did with with this command here. So so now what what will happen is as users come along and log into uh, this, uh, this system, this uh, 10.0.7.10, uh, we uh, will be capturing their credentials in such a way that can be dumped out later with a tool like LSASE or, or any yeah. number of things. So I'm going to simulate that I was, um, I'm Tommy. Uh, Tommy is, uh, if I look in the, let me just bring up domain admins here. Our good friend Tommy Boy is, uh, is a domain admin. Okay, let's double check that he is. There he is, Tommy Callahan. So Tommy is going to uh, remote into... Uh, that system that we just flipped the flag on to, um, you know, install a patch or or do some maintenance. So we'll log in as me and uh, boy, passwords, Joe, they have to be exact. And I don't know. Okay, good. <laughs> they, they get it right. Um, they have to be exact. Statement of the year, Brian. Yes. It turns out you have to use the right password. Isn't that something? Oh, and I'm going to... Um, let me just see if this works real quick while this is logging in, Joe. I'm going to bring in our weather cam. Um, <laughs> oh, that, that worked. Oh, my gosh, that's dumb. I just uh, I was just on the, the Peloton a little while ago, and I just left my um, yeah, I left my iPad pointed out. And I was oh. like, I'll just have it join as if it's a <laughs> if it's a okay. So, so we'll, we'll leave weather cam up in case, you know, in case you see like a Sasquatch or something. Just let me know. <laughs> Run by. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we've logged in as Tommy. Now I'm going to do one thing, uh, Joe. I'm going to give us a gimme um, because on my Cali box I want to run LSASI and, and dump dump creds out of LSAS. Um, that is something that, understandably, Defender EDRs right really good at. Really don't want us doing. So I am going to. I am um, just going to, for the sake of this discussion, say that 
um, that we were able to we were able to do a bypass. Okay, so I'm just going to shut off uh, AV for now so that this will work. Okay, so Tommy's logged in. I'll just minimize this for now. Let me get back on my Cali box, uh, and now we could come back here and run L Sassy. So I'm going to do L Sassy, and I think the syntax here is domain first. That might not be important, but that's what I have committed to memory. Uh, Bry fly, that's sort of windy tube, and then uh, and then the target. I think. 7, 5, 10. Boy, wouldn't that just be a treat if this actually worked? Yes. Okay. I can't believe we can keep all of these. The, mine's too full. I have to write everything down now. <laughs> yeah. I um that's 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 the last correct command you're gonna see out of me for the rest of our time together, Joe. Um, but this is cool. Love seeing something like this, right? Like, check this out. Little coat. That's Tommy the domain admin's password. So uh you know, this is, I'd say, a pretty trivial attack to set up, right? I think the hardest part is that uh, is getting this L sassy to actually work, right? Because, um, boy, back in the day, and by back in the day, I mean just a few years ago, Defender would be really easy to get around. But even it, I think, is pretty good these yeah. days, wouldn't you say? At, at yeah, I mean, I think there's two sides of that, right? It's that um, every time Defender comes up with a detection, then on the, you know, other side of the coin, some great coder is like, oh, but I found a new bypass. So I think, you know, for sake of demonstrations, we often disable Defender just so we don't, I mean, you know, pray to the demo gods that it goes well. We just make it go well. But yeah, it, it's not as if we don't try seven different ways on each pen test because um, there's different combinations of antiviruses, EDRs. One of the combinations is going to work uh, yeah. because they're just like the you know, bad guys continue to update there. So do the tool makers for, you know, LSAS here, the variety of ways you can get um, LSAS memory dumps. There are as many bypasses as there are defenses. So, yep. Yep. Right on. So what we would typically do at this point is go, okay, cool. Little coat, super let's do. And I usually do, um, I usually use secrets dump to dump stuff out of the domain controller, but I've been trying to do more and more, with crack map exec because it can do flipping everything so um i'm gonna do uh cme this one i wrote down because i don't i <laughs> do not know how to do okay so uh so i'm gonna do smb i'm gonna point at the domain controller i'm gonna specify tommy i'm gonna specify password of little coat and i don't know if you uh, you might have actually been the one that you're probably the one that told me about this but Boy, one thing I really like about dumping hashes with crack map exec is they they have this flag enabled. So it only dumps the enabled users. Cause when you do it with and, and maybe secrets dump can, and I just don't know how, but one thing that's always a little bit of a can be a conversational confusion introducer a little bit is we dump all the hashes with secrets dump. We do a password cracking exercise, right? A couple of days of just let's crack right. as many threads as we can. We give that output to the client and they're like, oh, well, 30% of these were disabled. So, you know, and, and I mean, we tell them it is the kitchen sink, but I think it adds way more impact when you're only giving stats and percentages on people that are live. Yes. With one caveat to that. Sure. Um, we found, remember, multiple times that there are disabled accounts that have a password in them that also work for enabled accounts. And so it doesn't mean we won't try those. So one of the best practices that we recommend when people disable accounts is also rotate the password so that, so you know, just put a scrambled password in. If you want to keep the account around for a while, best practice would say, if you re-enable that, you should change the password anyways. So when you disable it, make sure to rotate that password with something scrambled so you're not storing a weak password, you know, in Active Directory oh, that is disabled. Good call. I did not uh, I did not think about that. That's awesome. Well, there we go. There's another good AD defense. Gosh, I never thought of that. I just thought, well, disabled is good enough. But 
disabled with a easy to crack hash and then that works especially i mean you recall on a lot of our pen tests where, where we'll see accounts and even if like five of them are disabled we'll see a recurring password and we're like hey wait a minute you know um, sometimes it's in hindsight and we're like oh man why didn't we you know yeah. take advantage of that so and it's because we didn't need it um you know we found a different path but there's also some interesting things in hindsight when you are password cracking that you'll you'll see a pattern and you're like oh there's something to this we need to highlight this account because if we go back and password spray it's used in several other places oh very yeah very good call i wonder in all honesty you know how many times out of pen test right do we spend days weeks we finally get to the end and then look back and go there was some there were some easier wins back then <laughs> You know, right, exactly. Like, yeah. There's like, <laughs> oftentimes you're like, oh, we totally missed an easy one right here. Yeah. It reminds me of, um, did you ever see that, that I think it's an eighties movie labyrinth with, uh, Jennifer Conley and, um, um, David Bowie. And it's like, a, yeah, it's like yeah. a, I think it's a Jim Henson one or something, but there's, yeah. uh, the, the girl's going to go in this, this big labyrinth. Right. And, and she's talking to some little, little worm creature or something. And, and uh, he's like, oh, you got to, you know, go this way to head to the castle. And she starts to walk and he's like, and, uh, and and he goes, oh, hold on one second. And she goes, oh, oh, you mean the other way? Okay, cool. And goes that way. And then he makes the comment of like, if, if she just would have kept going the original direction, she would have gone straight to the castle. But now, you know, she's embarking on this multi-day nightmare. Um, I, I kind of wonder if some of our pen tests didn't go uh, like that. Oh, speaking of nightmares, um, I don't know. I don't think you were on with us when, when, when we mentioned this. I just want to bring this up uh speaking of domain controllers and the extraction of hashes that we just did um i started an issue uh let's see back in november because i now have had two maybe three mm -hmm. domain yeah, controllers that, that, yeah. that have They're crashed crazy. yeah um in fact a couple people have reached out now um saying yeah me too and here was the circumstances and it was all different than what i described so mm -hmm. i just wanted to mention it here again in case somebody does know of that happening i figure it doesn't hurt to just drop a comment on this issue right and maybe kind of as a community or maybe some of the tool authors or you know really kerberos and lsas geniuses will come along and, and maybe can go oh maybe it's this circumstance because i personally would like to know what what the causes are mm -hmm. so that for a pen test i can know you know before i run secrets dump if i might be having a problem you know um Luckily, it doesn't cause any like loss of data or anything, but it's still still got my heart pumping. So, yeah. um, okay, so uh, so we just did the the the, uh, the hash dump, and then you know we've got the goods now, right? So we can go off and we can crack these, or if we want to do fun things like um, take actions against the environment but pretend to be somebody else, uh, we can we can do that. We can do uh, we can run crack map exec as let's see. I need to scroll up a little bit here as, oh, and that's not going to allow me to do that. So um, move the whole window up. How about that? Windows. Uh, username. Mr. Admin. At hash. Okay. And now we have uh, phone. So we are now impersonating administrators. So we could get the blue team maybe chasing their tails by, who knows, right? Installing uh, any desk on 50 workstations or something, right? If we're a... Uh, bad guy get everybody all busy over in one one place and then at work while we're i don't know exfiltrating data and doing other things uh okay so that's just a sample of how a portion of the pen test can go many times more often than not right so let's take a look at also, what since we're talking about defense though brian i wanted to interject and say um that registry key most EDRs now can monitor registry keys. There is no, and I repeat, no valid reason that I can ever think of to have that registry key um, enabled, but also in modern Windows systems, I'm just gonna say modern, so at least Windows 10, that registry key doesn't exist. So crack map exec actually creates the registry key if it doesn't exist and changes the flag to one, both of those things you should be alerting on. Um, it's not again seen as much but still used for persistent attackers to get some uh clear text creds so alert on that stuff it's another good defensive you almost should never get a false positive on that good good to know yeah i know that's something we've we've 
made the recommendations of several times. You know, it's nice that the EDR is doing its job of, you know, don't let dirty EXEs and code run, but also, hey, you're sitting right there on the machine. You know when anything farts, right? Like, so yeah. So let me know when some of these registry changes yeah. are tampered with. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to, I was logged in to desktop 10 as Tommy. I'm just going to log out now. And let me do just the simple move of, uh, I'm going to put in the protected users group, I'm going to stick Tommy in here to protect him. There he is. So a couple of things uh, will happen. Uh, actually, you know what? Um, let me think about this. Maybe I should, um, just for the sake of, let me let me do this. Just to, just to have a different... Um, admin to play with. I'm going to put Richard, Richard in the pr protected group. And then I'm going to sign in again. I'm going to sign in to desktop 10 just to do, I want to do the LSAS dump again and see how it's different this time now that we're using protected user Richard. Ah, nope, nope, nope. <laughs> yeah. The fingers just want to do what the fingers do. They do. They love Tommy so much. Okay, Richard. Um, yeah, I think I changed it to chocolate dashboard. In the movie. <laughs> Remember when all the M&Ms get in there? Uh, okay, now check this out. We'll see if... Uh, oh, my God, the Tommy Boy references just never go out of style. At least for Brian and I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, yeah, I just wonder if maybe, um, maybe I should update my references. But I like having a lab that is Tommy Boy themed too much. It just it puts me at ease. Um, Actually, let me log out real quick because I wanted to show you something I expected to run into. Oh, I know why. Um, oh, goodness. Yeah, probably broke the world. Okay, fine. Please just sign out gracefully and don't give me any trouble about it. Okay. Um, one thing I noticed when playing with this in the lab, let me go back to what I'm used to doing, connecting by IP. Uh, watch this now. I had to learn this one the hard way. Richard, chocolate dashboard. I think I'll get a warning. Yes. Isn't this interesting? A user account restriction, for example, time of day, blah, 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 is preventing you from logging on. Yeah. So what I learned is after, oh, in fact, let me please share this for to, to save somebody else. Let me save somebody else the headache. Do, 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 uh, right here. Why doesn't RDP work? This is a, this is a, a, a blog that answers specifically what I just. That's interesting. Into. So the, the deal is you need to do the RDP connection as the DNS name and that will force Kerberos. Oh, I learned something yeah. new. Mic drop. Oh, oh shoot, Joe, I forgot to use, hold on. Um, and that will force Kerberos. Oh. And crowd you got there. <laughs> <laughs> Were you, the, the applause came through okay and more than yeah, just yeah. okay. All right. Before we started recording, I let Joe know that I got a new toy. Um, I got a roadcaster for some music recording, and it's got a little soundboard thing, and I can't help but uh play with it. So when appropriate, I will uh insert just like tangents and music, Joe, I will insert <laughs> soundboard <laughs> clips liberally and without uh without remorse. You made it um, 40 minutes in without using it. I'm a little disappointed, to be honest. Oh, you mean you're disappointed? <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Uh, okay, so now if we do... <laughs> it's, so, it's so dumb. I, I just picture what my wife's expression would be like if she yeah. were on, just rolling her eyes so hard that I feel it across the, 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 uh, the city. Um, anyway, uh, back to business. So let's, let's log in just... Uh, uh, using its DNS name, and then we should be good to go with chocolate dashboard. Back in. Uh, let me just double check. I don't know if the Defender really likes to just turn its protection back on without oh, yes. asking. It tries so really me, hard. Let me see if it's going to be kind of stubborn. Okay, we'll wait for it to load here. And uh, while we wait. <laughs> Okay, and uh, thanks for uh, <laughs> and we're back. We're back at the studio. Let's check out the weather. Joe, any yeah. update? Any update? Yeah, it's about the same. Still snowing there. Okay, perfect. 
All right. Uh, so we'll close that. So let me go back to Cali. Let's rerun. Let's rerun. Uh, where is it? There is it. There we go. El Sassy. So we logged in this time as Richard. And what I'm hoping will happen is that we will not get uh, Richard's plain text password because of the protections that the protected users group provides. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. Please, please. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So take a little looky, see. So, I mean, just to come full circle. Yes, please. You um, set the W Digest flag, which in essence yep. tells Windows on that workstation or wherever it's set to store credentials in memory, which is LSAS, in clear text. So yep. that little trick we use often, we even sometimes do mean things like log people out or lock their screen so that they have to re-authenticate so we don't have to wait hours. Um, yeah. And then use LSASI to go pull that memory back remotely, which has the clear text credentials. Um, ideally, I mean, we, we use this sparingly and target specific people that are highly privileged or just allow us to move laterally to another workstation. So protected users forces Kerberos, which you saw, a new feature which I wasn't aware of, but you know Brian saw that you have to connect via host name because um, Kerberos, the way the protocol is implemented, but I, I've never seen that error before. So that was interesting. And the, yeah. the, the blog article, but putting people in the protected user group forces Kerberos authentication. Therefore, you also it also essentially neuters um, the W Digest, which is all outlined in that protected users group. Among some other stuff, there's some encryption stuff. I'm not sure if you're going to talk about that, but there's other stuff that protected users group does. This is one in particular. And for us, out of the gate, we don't necessarily know why our shenanigans didn't work. We have to go looking. Um, if we can get to the group policies at this point and say, wait, why why didn't? And so we may spin our wheels for a while trying to figure out what's going on. Why am I not getting clear text creds? What's, um, it's not obvious what the why um, Debbie Digest isn't working in this case. Yeah. And, and this is something that um, just, yeah, I think this would probably be, we could continue deeper into this in like a part three because there's, there, there's more to it. You know, I, I saw this, uh, wanted to lab it out, right? And just kind of prove to myself like, okay, this is what it could could look like. And it gets me thinking about, you know, gosh, early earlier in an engagement, I should probably check those privilege groups, right? Just to save myself some pain of like, why isn't stuff working? Um, but one one another link I wanted to drop uh, that I haven't had time to check myself, but actually I'm just going to, I'm going to paste it. I'm also going to pull up is... Uh, the, um, the I, I think now, I don't know this individual's name, but MPGN, who I think is the primary crack map exec maintainer uh, now, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. uh, talks about what we just did directly. You know, oh, all of our admins are in protected groups. So we're secure. So he gives the example of dumping Kerberos tickets with El Sassy. Yeah. So that is something that we still got, yeah. right? Uh, for Richard, there's Richard. Um, and and I, I'll, I'll try this next, but he has a nice visual here of um, pulling out those tickets, uh, doing a conversion with Impacket, yeah. and then um, ha and then you still have the, like the ticket lifetime, I guess, right? Or four Which hours. Which it reduces it to four hours, um, protected users. So you have four hours to use it. And yeah. this kind of speaks to us talking about, you know, we we've spent a long time many years talking about w digest and how bad it is and clear text credentials and people are implementing it so therefore the you know both the you know the good bad guys and the bad bad guys are moving to different techniques and they're saying well if w digest if people are using protected users group which you start to see on pin tests and you know real you know activities um now we have to up our game. We have to change. We have to move on to different techniques. And therefore, as defenders, we have to just continually adapt. Now, I think the positive side of that is 
so do the adversaries. The adversaries have to adapt. So do we as defenders. And that's my, you know, my point earlier about it's not just security's done. Check, we're all good. We can take the rest of the year off. We have to continue to adapt. That doesn't mean all of those security controls that we mentioned before you don't need to worry about and just pivot, you know, right to this and, you know, W digest flags. There's all those basics that we talk about. Get those out of the way. But um, yeah. there will be yeah. new techniques all of the time. You have to stay up to date on them. Um, and this is one of those. They just introduced that. I think that was last week, wasn't it? What's the date on that? Is the date there? Look, October. I swear I just saw this last week, but maybe somebody just re uh, boosted it or something. Yeah, this was, and I can't remember. I think I was searching something to do with, uh, yeah, just protected users. Maybe I just was Googling like protected users. I, user. I swear I just saw that tweet like last, who knows? But, okay. Yeah. yeah. But it's a, it's a great one. And then, um, yeah, I guess just kind of, kind of last thing I wanted to make sure I call out for, for today is, um, let's see, I don't know if I'll be able to gracefully go back. I guess I can. So with, with Richard now in the protected users group, the other, let's see if I can be able to find it easily. Uh, maybe not. Let's see here. Uh, Richard. Okay. There you go. The, other, the other protection we get now is that I can no longer do the NTLM pass the hash. Um, oh my goodness. I need to learn how to computer, but I'll figure out just, I'll, I'll figure it out eventually. Uh, where is it, Richard? Okay, so there we go. So if I go back to what I showed earlier and do a little, a little, oh, goodness. I'm just going to bring this up so it's not chopping off our, uh, not by our heads here. Yep. You see me. It's be, let's authenticate against the domain controller as user Richard and hash link. Yeah, now we get status account restrictions. So that was, I remember the first time we ran across that in the pen test, it was like, yeah, what? Yeah, wait, what? what the heck is going on? Oh, or wait, actually, Joe, here's what I did. Let me know if this comes through. First time I saw this, Joe, I was like, what the f is going on? <laughs> nice. <laughs> One of times you just need to be like, bleep, bleep, bleep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the oh, hatch won't pass and I can't stand it anymore. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I remember it, because th this, this always to me makes me think there's, there's a property set, uh, you know, you can put that on somebody where they can only log in, uh, under yeah. certain rules. That's yeah. what I, that's yeah. what I always think. I can't remember. That's up here somewhere. Right. Um, oh, log on hours. Right. I, th I always yeah. think, oh, it must be something with that, but it could mean so many things. And in this case, it means, uh, Richard protected. So no, no messing with Richie. And, and in simple terms, because NTLM is the hash and you're essentially saying log in with an NTLM hash because we've forced Kerberos off only by putting them in the protected users group, NTLM authentication is no longer a valid authentication scheme. So no more pass the hash. Pass the ticket, as was in that tweet, yes. Uh, yes. Pass the hash, no. Yep. Yep. And, and many, you know, I would say newer folks in the ransomware or attack game would have to go back and research wait i can't pass the hash maybe that trips them up enough maybe they need to go figure out how to do pass the ticket there's more commands anything you can do to slow them down and buy you more time just works out better in your favor yeah all right well let me just see was there anything else that i'll just say uh any questions from my friends anybody had anything um that's all i was wanting to cover today unless joe anything um anything else came to your mind um but uh you know this was a this was a fun one this is one that's it's always like uh you know hey in your pen test report consider using that protected users group and then use a different pen testing consulting company <laughs> next year you know just to, i'm kidding I, i'm ki i kid but you know it's almost like we we want defenses to be better but boy yeah for those multi-year engagements when they they come in in year two and they're like bring it we we upped our game 2x it's uh yeah it's a little intimidating um no, I think that's it. If you wanted to plug the upcoming sim one, it's on the 29th, right? So, you know, just just shifting gears, kind of going back from the, you know, offensive side again to uh, defensive side. Um, you know, cover some of those topics again from a sim and sock. Um, so yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, we've got oh shoot, there it is. Yep, inception. inception. Um, also going to do uh, next Thursday at one. 
Uh, I'll do another 7MS live. So we tried it, I don't know, last week or the week before. It actually didn't go terrible. I mean, yeah. it's sort of stressful because now no longer am I just singing to the dashboard. I'm singing and people are virtually staring back. So that was a little weird. Um, but I tell you what, this the, the soundboard feels like it's uh, could be like a tension releaser, right? So if I botch the singing or completely screw up and there's no like, oh, let me re-record. I'll just, uh, you know, I'll just play with this stuff. Like uh, I was... I think before, I think it was before we hit record, right? I was telling you yeah. that I want to sprinkle in some of these effects into, you know, pen test reports and, you know, do like, uh, you know, you have three critical findings, you know, stuff like that. And then, um, or and say dark web for me just once with that voice. Come on. Yeah. I can find that on. Yeah. The dark web. Um, or, uh, I, this I, love it. I need it. <laughs> Web. Oh, I see. That's that's more of just a general. Uh, that's a. General. You have to do robot moves when you do that one too. It's got, oh, monster might be even a little more sinister. The dark web. That's not bad. <laughs> I like that. Or I think the other thing I'll do if if I'm going into a particularly um, you know purple laden report, right? Like lots of criticals. Get everybody on the Zoom call, and then I'll pretend I'm having audio problems that <laughs> only I can hear. Right. So I would, just, I would just like if you would join the call, it'd be like, "Oh, hey, Joe, what's going on in your neck of the woods?" <laughs> and then you'd be like, "Dude, you're, you got what? What? I don't hear it. Maybe it's your internet. Anyway, if it's turn to page seven, and then just, uh, I love just, it. just deliver it with a straight face. Yeah. All right. Well, I didn't see any questions come through, uh, but for folks that were watching, thanks for uh, thanks for checking it out, and Joe, thanks for thanks for joining. And let's just yeah. check real. Uh, Closing thought from our backyard weather cam. How much snow do you have there? Um, I think uh, I think it's supposed to be like, it, so it started about 6 a.m. and it's supposed to continue till like 6 p.m. And I think six to eight, something like that. Because this is the tail end of the, the great early winter snowathon that traveled across the country, right? Yeah. Now, are you getting... Oh, we had a little bit. It was a couple days ago. Um, it's it's been definitely an early snow winter. We don't normally get this amount of snow or any snow this early in the year. It's been great in the mountains. So um, yeah. All right, good stuff. Well, take care, everybody, and uh, we'll see you next time. See you, Brian.